today I'm going to be going through all of the movies I watched during the month of August 2021. There is 31 to talk about, so we're gonna have to go pretty quickly because I do not want this video being too, too long. So I'm gonna just do this in the order I watched them. Let's go. First up, we have Anything's Possible. This is a new Amazon Prime rom-com with a trans girl as the main character. It's one of the first movies just about a trans main character. And it, I think it's probably the first rom-com about a trans character. And I give this two and a half. Now, all of the stuff about her being trans was really, really good. But there was like friendship dramas and the rom-com was a bit, mm, I don't know. And there was lots of fights. And I get that at this age, you do do that. But I just... It just didn't quite work for me. I'm going to give it a two and a half. It's an average film. It's not bad. It's not good, but it is one of the worst of the year, in my opinion. Then we've got Pitch Perfect 2. This is a follow-up to Pitch Perfect. It gave this four stars. This is not as good as the first one, but it's still really, really good. The whole kind of setup of this movie is kind of ridiculous, but I still really, really enjoyed it. Then I have Minions, The Rise of Gru. I gave this film a three and a half. Yeah, it's better than the first one, but it's like nowhere near as good as Despicable Me 1 or 2. But it's still like a good film and I really enjoyed it. And I had a great time watching it with my friends. And we actually went to the cinema in my town, which doesn't show films that often. So I, I never go there, but it's the first time I've been there in like five years. And it was a really nice experience. Then I watched Prey, which is the new Predator movie. And this film was really good. I gave this one a four stars. The scenery was absolutely stunning throughout the whole of this film. And the way the Predator was utilised, the CGI was amazing. But the thing is, there wasn't much CGI, it was pretty much just practical effects, which was amazing. And the way music and the way silence was integrated through this movie and the thriller aspect of it was really, really good. And I watched a, it's not a rom-com, but it has romantic elements. I'm going to call it like a bromance. It's like a brom-com, which is I Love You Man, which has Jason Segel from How I Met Your Mother and Paul Rudd in it. And yeah, this was a really good time. I give this four stars. It was a really, really enjoyable ride. I really enjoyed the chemistry between Paul Rudd and Jason Segel's character. Also, we had a love interest for Paul Rudd, which was um, the person who plays Anne in Parks and Rec. She was really, really good at this. It was a really nice time. It did kind of filter out. A, the, there was a kind of... The 10 minutes before the climax were a little bit boring. But apart from that, a really good film. Then I watched Bullet Train, which is the movie of the summer. You need to go and check this movie out. I give this film a four and a half out of five. I watched this with my friends. It was absolutely amazing. The editing, the way this film is centred, the way it, the pacing on all the characters were handled really, really well. I didn't like Joey King in this movie and I don't really like her as an actress. She was all right in this, but I think they should have had a younger actress. Apart from that, this was really great. And the Ryan Reynolds of Channing Tatum's cameo was really, really good. Then we have Palm Springs, which I gave five out of five stars. This is Andy Samberg, and I never remember her name. And I can't even say what TV show she's from because it's a spoiler. But Christine, I don't know. She was in the um, Death to 2020 and Death to 2021. This was really, really good. Also, it has J.K. Simmons in it. It's amazing. It's a time link movie. It's really good. I get five stars. It's one of my new favorite movies of all time. It's one of my favorite movies that I have watched this year. It's absolutely incredible. It's really, really great. And it does belong in my top 100 movies of all time. It was outstanding. One of my favourite movies of 2020. Then we have a movie which I think is a little bit overhyped, which is The Sea Beast. This is a new animated movie from the people behind Big Hero 6. It's like the producers and the animators behind that. And I love Big Hero 6. It's one of my favourite Disney movies. It's one of my favourite superhero movies. I love that movie. I guess one three and a half. This was actually quite good. It was better than I thought it would be, but it still wasn't great. N not all the time the plot worked. It didn't always work. And sometimes... It was kind of awkward and I didn't love it 100%. And I obviously catched up with some 2022 releases. We're watching Uncharted. I rented this for like 1.99. It was all right. It was all right. It wasn't that good. I gave it three stars. Like it probably should be a two and a half, but Tom Holland is quite likable and Mark Wahlberg is okay. As an adaptation, it is bad, but as a movie and an action movie, it's still quite bad. The villain doesn't really work and the fight scenes don't really work, but Tom Holland is good in pretty much everything he's in. So, you know, it was quite good. Then I watched a Miles Teller rom-com, which is Two Night Stand, which is about two and a half to have a one night stand. And it is, they get trapped in by snow. I guess from three and a half, it was really enjoyable. There was lots, it was very, it was a very cute rom-com. I really enjoyed the ending. It was really sweet and it had a lot of Christmas vibes, even though I didn't expect that going into it it doesn't look like it's going to be a Christmas Eve. It's not a Christmas well, but there were a couple of scenes at Christmas which were really nice. Then I watched Christopher Nolan's Memento for the first time. I gave this four and a half out of five. This is one of the most confusing movies I've ever watched, 
but that is not a bad thing in this case i really enjoyed it i really enjoyed being confused i really enjoyed trying to work it out and i watched this partly with my mum, which was a really nice experience the ride was i watched this with one of my friends i give this four stars this has kate hudson and anne halfway in it and they're going against each other and they're best friends and they accidentally book the same day for their wedding this has michael Arden in it it has chris pratt in it it was a really nice time Obviously, it's not the best chick flick slash rom com I've ever watched, but it's still a pretty damn good film. Then, Book Smart. This is a movie which is Olivia Wilde's first movie. I'm watching it. I watched this a month because Don't Worry Darling comes out next month, and I'm really, or well, this month currently, and I'm really excited for that film. I gave this one four and a half. I thought it was really good. It should actually, if I was to re rate it, I'd give it four stars because it's not perfect. But it's still a good film. I really enjoyed it. All the characters worked really, really well. The main character is good. I really like the sight of the secondary main character. She's really, really nice. Um, Lisa Kudrow was in this, which I didn't realize she'd be in. It was really good. The whole scale, the writing, it was really good. And there was like some people that I didn't think would be in this that were in this. Okay, guys, we're getting on to some DC animated movies. I watched two on this day. We have Batman Bad Blood. This is about Batman. We have Dick Grayson. We have got... Um, we've got Damien. I don't remember a lot about this film. Oh, yeah, we have Batwoman. This was a really, really good film. I loved this. I give it four and a half. It's in the Lego Batman movie. This is the best DC animated movie I've ever watched. Also, sorry for the anger claims. My camera just... Yeah, it was really good. Then I watched Justice League versus the Teen Titans, which is about the Teen Titans versus the Justice League. Raven was really, really good in this movie. I really enjoyed this movie overall. I give it four stars. Then I decided this month for me and my friend for a little bit of a laugh. We watched all of the Mission Impossible films, and I did watch a film in between, but I'm going to talk about it afterwards. Mission Impossible 1, four and a half. It's a really, really good film, really solid. Mission Impossible 2, two stars. Not a good film. Mission Impossible 3, great action, four stars. Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, one of the best films I've ever watched. Four and a half stars, the scene where he climbs out that building is absolutely incredible. Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, four and a half. Yeah. It's not as good as um, Ghost Protocol, but it's practically on the same level. Mission Impossible Fallout, the only five stars in the entire series, one of the best movies of all time, and one of the best action movies. I'm not putting any pictures on the screen for that because I went way too quickly. Okay, let's go back to Not Okay. I gave this one three stars. This is a 2022 release, which is a satire, and I actually had a good time with this film. I did not like the main character. I did not like really like the actress. Like The acting wasn't that good, but it was all right. There was actually a B plot line which was thrilling through all of this about an activist and I thought her role in this film was really, really good. Then I watched Avatar for the first time, which I've never seen, which I know people say is one of the most overhyped films of all time. I do think it is overhyped. I do think it shouldn't have earned as much money. But the scale, the scope, the action, the first two and a half hours are really, really good. I just did not really love the final half an hour. But I still gave this film a four and a half stars. It is still an eight out of 10 for me or an 8.5 out of 10. It is still a great film. It just doesn't reach the top 100, so it cannot go five stars. Then we have Back to the Future. This is my third favorite film of all time. I loved it. I gave it five stars. Obviously, it wouldn't be my third favorite film of all time if it wasn't the five stars. I consider this the greatest time horror movie of all time. I consider this one, I do consider this the greatest movie of all time. If we're going greatest movies, but it's not the best movie of all time. It's not my favorite movie of all time. But I, loved, I actually watched this with my friend who'd never seen this movie before, so to watch it with her for the first time was amazing. Then I watched How To Be Single, which is a movie which has Rebel Wilson and it has Dakota Johnson and some other people and it's really, really nice time. I gave it three stars. It was a fun kind of movie about girls and it was really, really good. Okay, then I watched Bridget Jones's Diary. You can see we're about to get on the rom-com era. Four and a half stars. This was really good. The best one in the trilogy. I loved Kind of Fire for this. Did not like Hugh Grant in it. Bridget Jones, The Edge of Reason. I give this one three and a half. Significantly worse than the first one. I loved Hugh Grant and this hated Colin Firth in this one. Then I watched Nope. Nope was an experience in this film. Me and my friends went to go to the cinema on this. Five stars. The second best movie of the year. It goes between everything ever all at once and The Batman. The Batman is the best film of the year. Nope, but then everything ever all at once. Incredible. Jordan Peele is a mastermind. Then... Bridget Jones is a baby. Four stars. The middle one of the trilogy. It is the disappearance of Hugh Grant's character in this film and him not the lack of him in it isn't great. But Patrick Dempsey does make up for us and it is a really nice movie. Teen Titans The Judas Contract. Three and a half stars. It's a really good decent animated film but there is a inappropriate relationship in this film between a 16 year old and like a 50 year old which is, just doesn't sit right with me. And I also the film is kind of boring. Justice League Dark. 
another three and a half, but better than Teen Heist of the Judas Contract. We had Constantine this one. This is a good time. Next, we have one of the films that started out as the best. The first 15 minutes, I'd give five stars. But then the rest of this film was not good. Batman Ninja. And this was... I fell asleep probably three times in this film. Yeah. But those are all the films. I'm going to just review again. Yeah, these are all the films that I watched during the month of so August. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope you guys have a great day. And I will see you in a new video soon. Tomorrow, Saturday, I'm going to have my review for Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, the first two episodes. Definitely stay tuned. Next week is Disney Plus Day, so there is going to be a load of content for that. We'll have the Pinocchio review, She-Hulk review. There's going to be probably some trailers and probably some announcements and stuff. So yeah, I'll see you guys in a new video soon. Bye!